Hello, it's Sherry with Red Apple Auctions. Today's video is really for those of you that are working with associations and you're planning for your annual auction. Very often we will see these take place at conferences and over the past year, yes, we've had hybrid, we've had virtual and we've got in person. I work with a few of these association auctions every year. What I have done today is I've jotted down the different types of associations that I've worked with and then given you an example or two on the procurement side that you might want to consider when you're thinking about your event and what might speak to your audience. These events are a little bit different than your traditional nonprofit auctions they or school auction, for that matter. They have their own vibe. They've got their own kind of clientele and unique items. And so that's why I wanted to devote a video to them. Traditionally, I have seen that these types of events will oftentimes use an, a volunteer auctioneer, sometime maybe, sometimes maybe, uh, sometimes someone who's just particularly gregarious within their community. And when I'm working with those, I've taken over the auction, we see some huge increases in the amount of money that these groups can make. So don't be afraid to hire a professional. If you are an association and you've used maybe a board member or just a fun member of your team, because if you get some really good ideas, you're going to be able to boost not just your your auction, but your fund and need as well. And that's an area that seems to be neglected in a number of association auctions. So I jotted down, divided, if you will, into four different types of association groups that I've worked with. Maybe there's more, but this is kind of how I see it. And the advice that I give them is divided into these kind of four areas. So in one case, you've got associations for an industry, national association for an industry. So the members of that association tend to be businesses, not individuals, but businesses. It might be bankers, credit unions, hospice organizations, uh, really any, any industry, it's businesses that are, are, are joining into that. Another association that I've worked with are those that are national associations, but there's chapters. So there's a national organization, but then there's statewide or regional chapters as well. Those regional chapters are doing their own fundraising, but then there's also the national organization that's also doing fundraising. There's some kind of interesting dynamics on those auctions in particular. There's national associations for individuals who are in a specific profession. For instance, the National Auctioneers Association is a member uh, is a membership that I've purchased. I'm an individual auctioneer purchasing a membership into the National Auctioneers Association. But I've worked with groups who are insurance agents who buy into their national association, financial planners who buy into their association. You might have dermatologists or dentists or you know pick a engineers, civil engineers, structural engineers, pick a pick a profession and they're joining their professional association. And then finally, uh, National Association for Individuals who are interested in a particular hobby. Maybe it's genealogy. Uh, I just recently did an event and it was private plane owners. They, they own a specific type of plane. I'm sure there's some for cars. Pick a hobby, I'm sure there's an association for it. So when you're thinking about procurement in the live auction, what are you going to put into the live auction? Uh, there's always specific categories that we target. I go over this with my clients. I like five categories that we put into our live auction. But when we're looking at these associations, we're adapting one, two, three of those items to really speak to the crowd, to speak to the clients, the members. And so to that end, here's some examples. If we're working with an association for an industry, so again, that's where those businesses are members of the association. There was uh, one group that I worked with and they had a vendor who donated a trip to his city the business that bought that would meet with the president of that vendor. They would then get to go to an area, a, a private, uh, a live music venue that most people don't have access to, but that vendor has a membership in, longtime membership. So you're going to get to go to the city. You're going to have three nights at a hotel. You're going to get to go to this private membership club. You're going to get to see some great acts, musical acts and so forth that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. And you get a meal out with the vendor. Now, why is that good? Well, the vendor is getting some one-on-one -on -one time with a potential customer or a customer. It depends on who purchases it. Uh, and on the flip side, that person who's buying it is going to get exposed, of course, to that product that the vendor is trying 
trying to sell. So vendors can be good uh, good donors of, of items for your auction in that kind of a situation. You could also have a vendor donate a suite, like you've got a suite to the Dallas Cowboys game. Well, I, as a business owner, might be very pleased to purchase that and then take my clients down to Dallas to go into the suite with the game to see the game. You know, So that could be something that I'd take my clients to as a business owner. That's a couple of examples there of what are good procurement items for those that type of an association. Let's talk about an association for a chapter. So that's where you've got the national association and then you got the statewide or the regional chapters. I have sold uh, whereby the lobbyist at the national organization is going to go out and work with the statewide lobbyist team on strategy. So if they aren't already doing that or maybe they want extra support, Maybe it's a young team. Maybe that state lobbying team is planning a lobby day at the state level. They want to have their national lobbyist with them. That would be a reason why that group would buy that. That chapter would buy that. Uh, another example might be that the executive director is coming out and is going to motivate those chapters employees. So if you've got a very dynamic executive director or president at the national level, the chapter, if they're bidding on that, would bring that in, or the board of that chapter would bring that in to have access to that person. And yeah, this is, again, you're selling other things that we might consider more normal, but this these two types of items are also something that can make an impact depending on the type of organization you are. An association for professional individuals, such as the example I gave, I'm a National Auctioneers Association member. Because individuals are purchasing this, one thing that I have uh, I have seen sold at our auctions, at the National Auctioneers Association, is you're going to buy time, an hour or two, with another auctioneer, and that auctioneer is going to work with you on your chant, which is what we call the fast talk. You know, that's the fast talk. We call it the chant. <clears throat> other people refer to it as the fast talk that auctioneers do. So you're buying one hour of time with another auctioneer to work on your chant. Another one that I've sold, uh, this was for a group of financial, it was either the financial planners or insurance, and they were purchasing time with the conference speaker, one hour with the conference speaker, and that speaker was going to work with them on dealing with sales calls and facing rejection on sales calls. Finally, an association for individuals who are interested in a common hobby. So again, we would sell what we would sell at a traditional nonprofit auction, but you may want to cycle in something specific to your crowd. So for genealogy, maybe I, as a budding genealogist, would be interested in purchasing time with a master genealogist who's got access to databases I don't have access to or complicated databases that I don't have time to learn. I'm looking for time with that person whereby I can get some research done on my family tree, and that's worth money to me. That's worth some, some key money. Anytime you can get deep research on, done on that, it's, it's good. What about a gemologist? Maybe I'm, uh, an, uh, I've got uh, some gems, but this guy over here is known for having some really unique gems, and I'm going to have time with him, and I'm going to get to see some cool gems and kind of hear his stories and see his private collection, which normally is not accessible to others. So those are more powerful to your unique audience, and those aren't the kinds of things that we would typically sell in a you know, standard nonprofit auction, but they would speak to your audience. So there's some ideas there. Uh, of course, there's a lot more to these association auctions than just procurement. And also, um, I mentioned earlier about the fund and need and different strategies in that. So if you are an association looking to maybe upgrade, ready to take it to the next level with your auction, uh, please reach out. My name is Sherry Truler at Red Apple Auctions. You can find me online at redappleauctions.com. I look forward to finding you online or pick up the phone or schedule an appointment. We'll visit then. As always, hey, good luck to you in your fundraising event.